It's too bad we didn't come out of that with another world dragon soul in our pocket. But I'm glad we saved Sonya. Indeed. You've grown a great deal, Yuma. Huh? Where'd that come from? It's not like you to say things like that out of the blue. When you first met that girl, you despised the thought of invoking my power. Do you remember that? Yeah, I remember. Back then, I was terrified too. And now you make strides to use my blessing well. You have begun to understand the true way to wield my strength. And you are not alone in your growth. The other dragon ears have grown alongside you as well. The songs they play are sweet to my ears and stir in my soul a longing for faraway times. Indulge me in a tale, Yuma. Long ago, before even Ragnarok, the children of man, elf, and dragonkind forged together a means of speech, the rune songs. From my own body, I wrought seven harmonic armaments and made gifts of them to the song's players, tokens of my favor, and so much more. Harmonics, as they came to be known, are potent tools. By wielding my flesh, you and your friends may channel dragon energy into forms. But the songs as you know them are mere echoes. An age has passed since man and dragon could truly hear one another's souls. No. It did please me to learn that some listeners yet endure. You mean... Diva's Magica? People like Kirika, right? Yes. And no. I commend her sisterhood for their devotion to my teachings, but those were the days of true masters, songsmiths without peer. Before, the song forms were free, fluid. Any melody born of strong enough emotion could be refined into a rune song, a heart song. I think I understand. Everyone used to have those powers. Why did we uh, stop? Deus cast a wide shadow, and supplicants gathered beneath in desperate hope of salvation. And so began an age of transgressions. Understand that dragon energy must be exchanged, given, never taken, guided, never forced into shape. Deus cast aside these notions, and with staggering power brought the world to heal. Catastrophe followed. As in the catastrophe? What exactly happened? Quakes, wildfires, the deep places birthed great horrors. Geysers erupted afresh, filling the skies with ash and poison. Natural disasters fueled one another in a fearful cycle, threatening stone, soil, tree, and sky, in short, the world. 
And so we gathered. The dragons and their sworn champions. Its last defenders against Deus. The war that ensued would come to be known in your tongue as Ragnarok. It was nothing like the heroic, glamorous wars of legend. The world we fought for came to ruin. Our champions, once so resolute, faltered and fell. And in a final twist of the knife, Deus' faithful seized an harmonic for themselves. With that, the Seven were split, and the last song lost to us. The world lay dying, its throat already cut. Without the last song, we had but one recourse. The five world dragons gathered at Deus' seat of power, and in a last act of defiance, we pooled our magic to forge a seal. It was all we could do in such dire straits. To merely reach Deus demanded more of us than any task before or since. In our fight with the Draco Machina, guardians of Deus, we were injured, our power exhausted. What your people call the unapproachable tower was known in those days as the Ziggurat, and it was from within that Deus wrought catastrophe. It was also there that the world dragons made our stand, and there we gave of ourselves to seal both Deus and the tower beyond the flow of time. The other four world dragons poured the last of themselves into the seal and turned to crystal. Similar fates should have claimed me. The songs of the Dragon Ears whom I fought beside sustained me. My body was broken. My mind was quickly going the way of my siblings. Left with few choices, I... made the seal itself my vessel. I kept vigil over that seal we placed for untold years. I could not leave, nor do anything but dwell on my sin. One day, however, a man arrived. And that was Genus. Why did you possess him? The seal could not sustain my dragon energy forever. Not like a fleshly body. I convinced the man it was to our mutual benefit to cooperate. And we forged a pact. He accepted me into himself. But he was nothing like you. Given the choice, he would always decline the aid of others, preferring his own company exclusively. He too was removed from the flow of time by my power, even ceasing to age. I thought it a gift. But immortality only drove him deeper into isolation. Alas, there was a time when I thought he could change, but... Complications arose. Disastrous complications. <sighs> you, Yuma, are not him. You lack for pride, for strength as a warrior. But in their place, I see compassion. I hear the songs of your friends. Whatever bond we share, Yuma, it graces me with music, memories, and a shining light I thought lost to me forever. I wish for you to know all this. 
Because if nothing else, that makes me very, very happy.